Nam kele kele koi kubo yetu. Welcome to our program. I am Drugs Malan, the Ring Correspondent for South Africa. And tonight I'm going to be talking about a South African son. DJ Creel was getting an unexpected world title shot on Saturday evening. It's buried on the undercard of a return of featherweight champion Leo Santa Cruz in the Microsoft Theater in the city of Angels, Los Angeles. And he is facing a guy by the name of Carlos Licona for the IBF Strawweight World Championship. So we'll see uh, what DJ can do. If he can become another South African World Champion, he took the fights on a, on, a, on a few weeks' notice. Now, what do we know about Carlos Licona? Um, he also only recently uh, won a belt. Quite unknown, went under the radar. He's trained by Robert Garcia. But Garcia is, of course, a well-known camp. Uh, the most famous people is, of course, his son, uh, Mikey Garcia, pound for pounder. And uh, he had his breakout here in 2018. Uh, he beat Anel Rivera in Puerto Rico in the other fighter's backyard. Rivera, former world title challenger, so a good opponent, and he won on points. That tells me that he's got the mental fortitude to go into the lines then and pull up a win. Then he fought a sort of a run, in, run of a mole opponent to stay busy. He won again on points, but by split decision. So there's a bit of inconsistency in that performance. And in his title winning effort against Mark Anthony Barriga, a Filipino Olympian, uh, he won a split decision again. It was a walkout bout on the Tyson Fury Deontay Wilder card. Now, in that fight, uh, that's the only footage I could get. He had a lot of trouble with Barriga, it was a southpaw, athletic, in and out kind of style. And Licona struggled with that style. Um, at the end, it was a split decision, two, two points either way. I thought he was maybe a tad lucky to get the decision, but there wasn't much in it, admittedly. So Likona on paper is to put in the pun the typical paper champion in our era of four world champions and 17 weight divisions. But he's still a tough guy, he's got a nice background story, had to sell bottles for recycling to pay for his training expenses, came up the hard way. And he also had 75 amateur bouts and uh, he qualified to represent Mexico in the Olympics but he couldn't go because of visa problems. He is a native of Westminster in California. So he'll be fighting in his backyard, basically, in Los Angeles. He's the home fighter. And uh, what kind of style does he got? His hero is Juan Manuel Marquez. And we all know Marquez is a brilliant counterpuncher. And that's what he bases his style on. So he's not your typical Mexican fighter. He likes to lay back. He's not somebody who's aggressive, comes forward, swarms you all over to the body and head. He stands back and he box and he tries and pot shots you and find the loopholes in your defense and that's what he did against Barriga what I can tell is he does have good timing he, he, he's got a good uh, straight right hand that he'll nail with you with if you come in open or at the wrong ang angle but he's not a, a, a workhorse he's a sort of an awkward boxer kind of fighter now DJ Krill on the other hand if he goes into the first run and gets knocked out with the first punch that Likona throws it's not going to happen Likona only has two knockouts in his 14 hour record even if it happens, DJ is still a winner because nobody ever thought that he would go as far as he did. Um, he only had three amateur fights. He lost all three. Then he decided to turn pro. I think everybody would have told him, you had three amateur fights, you lost those, are you crazy? And he lost his first pro fight on points. And then he won his second pro fight against the same opponent. And from then, it's been on the up and up. But matched him later in his career against Odisa Magusha, the current South African strawweight champion. Uh, and, he, and he beat Magusha on points over eight rounds. Went through a few tough spots to do that, but he managed it. Uh, and then he won one of those in-between belts, the WBC international title uh, from Dexter Alimento. Uh, by the, at that time, once beaten Filipino. Then after that, uh, his last fight was in March of this year. He uh, fought for Lisa Magusha again, this time over 12 rounds, had a better performance, came through again. So he has been progressing in leaps and bounds. He's now Ring Magazine's number 10 ranked strawweight. Uh, he's also, style-wise, he's a boxer. He's got good feet, good hands, decent hand speed, swift of foot. He knows how to work for angles uh, and he's more primarily a boxer. He's not as laid back as Likona is. Um, then in March, he got a big sponsorship to, move, to go and relocate to America. He moved to Vegas, trained under Kenny Adams, 
was previously of Colin Nathan at Hot Box Gym that's been churning out all these champions. But Kenny Adams is a trained the Olympic squad is of course famous for training Kennedy McKinney. Uh, we all know Kennedy McKinney, a former two-time world junior featherweight champ and uh, Olympic gold medalist. So he's got a good coach there, but it will be his first time with Kenny Adams in the corner. And also, he's been inactive for almost a year. That is a worrying factor. He was looking for a fight, any fight, and with a few weeks now, this boom, he's got a world title fight nonetheless. So, how do I see this fight going down? I see it as a very, very 50-50 fight. It's very hard to pin this down because there's, there's limited footage of Likona. He strikes me as a bit of inconsist, bit of an inconsistent fighter. Uh, he is a guy that makes fights closer than they need to be. And uh, I think what DJ will need to do here is, is maintain a busy work rate, use his feet to get in and out because uh, Likona doesn't cut off the ring that well and uh, be busy with a jab, move in and out. And Likona, he will fight he will need to be a bit more aggressive and a, and, and, and a bit more up on the up and up of his work rate. Time DJ when he walks in and uh, and make him make mistakes and catch the judge's eyes with those counters. Now, it's a very hard fight to call because you don't really know how good Likona is, but he's been active. He fought three times in 2018. DJ only fought once. Like I say, he's almost a, almost a year of inactivity. Um, he's got a new trainer, a very good trainer, but a new trainer in a corner. You'll have to see how that jolts. And then uh, Likona is the home fighter. He's fighting in Los Angeles. Last time over there, it was close and the decision went his way. So for DJ to win this fight, he's going to have to win it convincingly. If it's close, they're going to give it to Likona. If a fight was in South Africa uh, or on a neutral ground, I would have no trouble picking uh, DJ to do this. And as I've said, I really want DJ to win. I've met him a couple of times. He's a really nice dude. Uh, I want him to win this fight, but it, it's hard for me to get over the year's worth of inactivity. That's what bothers me, plus the fact that uh, Lee Kona has been active and uh, he's fighting in his hometown. So I think it's going to be a tactical fight. It's, it's, it's going to be a close fight. It's going to go down to the wire. And I just don't know if DJ Krill is going to get a decision in Los Angeles with Garcia's in the other corner. So if I'm pressed for prediction, I have to go with Likona, escaping with another controversial, perhaps, split decision, just like he did against Barriga. Um, I can see DJ shaking off a cobwebs, lifting his performance like he's never been, and simply dazzling and outmoving uh, uh, Likona. He's got the kind of style that will be difficult for Likona because he's got those fast feet. Uh, I have to be realistic. The thing is, I worry about the inactivity. I worry about the changes in trainers. So that's why if I put my cop, my head on a head on a, on a block, I've got to go with Likona by controversial split decision maybe again. But I'm hoping uh, to hell that DJ surprises me and dazzles him. And, and comes home with a title. In that case, I think you'll have to do it by a convincing points decision. So that's what I think you feel about the fight. Uh, guys, let me know in the comment section what you think. Please subscribe to the channel. Also check out my blog, www.couchpotatofightguru.blogspot.com. You can also follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at DrooksOnBoxing. And also look out for me in Ring Magazine. There's a weekly department called World Beat. I do the South African scene. If you're in South Africa, it's difficult to get the physical magazine here. Go to a website, subscribe to the digital edition. It's much, much cheaper. It's very good value for money. You just download it. And uh, you can follow the world of boxing. Until we meet again, best of luck to DJ Krill. Please prove me wrong. And until we see each other again, keep those hands up.